All right, so I'm finally getting my video out here on the iFlight Defender 16, another DJI 03 Cinewhoop. I've reviewed a number of these on my channel. I'll get into the whole reason as to why this uh, video is very late and why I'm late to the party on this one a little bit later in the video, but first I'll get into the specs and what makes this one a little bit different, and then we'll talk about all the issues I ran into, pros and cons, and then who I think this is going to be for. So first off, uh, we'll start off with the giant battery here. Uh, they did send me a few of these. These are 900 milliamp hours, and they're 2S, and they have a special, you know, pins for charging. They do include the charge adapter, and it just plugs in like so. It just snaps in very easy, and there's a USB-C over here. You do need a uh, quick charge 3.0 compatible, uh, at least a 30 watt charger to charge these batteries. A lot of uh, phone chargers these days with uh, with fast charging do, can do 30 watts, so that we'll be able to charge these. The charger power adapter is included. Uh, if you are looking for one, iFlight does sell this 100 watt power adapter brick that does USB-C uh, quick charge 3.0 and power delivery, and this goes up to 100 watts. So you Obviously, you need a minimum of 30 watts, but you can go as high as 100 watts. I don't think it charges any faster, but um, that minimum of 30 watts needs to charge up these specialized batteries. But the charge adapter is included, and you do get one battery included in in the uh, setup here, along with that nice case over there. Um, we get a bunch of these other like documentation, receiver instructions, some receiver connector wires. As mine didn't come with the receiver, and some other like documentation on the propellers. Um, stuff like that. Not, nothing too important. Of course, you get the drone itself and the battery and the charge adapter. Char the battery pops up pretty easily, like right here. It's a little spring-loaded lock, and it'll just pop the battery out. Very, very quick and easy to swap the batteries in and out on this one. Um, the motors on here are 1002 14,000 kV. So these little tiny motors here to keep everything lightweight. The props I'll talk about later. These originally came with these HQ um, 1.8 inch props. They have now since gone to the Gemfan 45 millimeter propellers. And I'll talk about the whole propeller thing a little bit later. But if you're wondering uh, why this video is late is because I had um, the propellers exploding on me and I was crashing because the propellers would fall off or fly away. And I you know, uh, couldn't review it because I couldn't get more than a a one minute flight before the propellers broke and then uh, I would, uh, you know, I ran out of propellers and then I had to wait for them to send me some new ones. Uh, but then I just learned that as of November 10th, they're no longer selling the Defender 16 with these propellers. So maybe this whole propeller discussion is kind of moot, but I will talk about that a little bit later. Of course, uh, the, you get the DJI 03 system in here. Uh, I did not get the ND filters. They do have ND filters available and know the Flywoo ND filters do not fit this because the mounting mechanism is a little bit different. The, the camera is uh, soft mounted here. It's kind of hard to see. There's a little bit of a rubber grommet there. It allows you to change the camera angle. You can go fairly high up or down low without uh, getting any of the frame in view, which is nice. And I did not get um, any jello as far as I could tell, which is surprising. Um, given the setup, so this this particular mount method seems to be good enough to prevent jello, even with you know I have like bent props here and they're not they're not in perfect shape. Um, the O3 air unit is sitting here on the bottom. It is a partially naked O3 air unit, so a lot of the um, RF shielding is still on there, along with the thermal paste underneath. Basically, uh, the outer casing is gone, and uh, if you want to. I guess make this lighter, you could strip it down a little bit more, but I think they went with this, uh, I think it's light enough as it is. And then there's a little door over here on the frame. You pop this door off like so. And the USB-C port there for activation and pulling off the files from the internal memory is there, as well as the uh, micro SD card slot. And inside you've got a, an all-in-one flight controller board where all the motors plug into, the air unit plugs into as well. And here in the back you have an LED and this little rubber cover covers up the USB-C port that is for connecting to Betaflight. 
All right, so here's how much it weighs with the battery. It's 126 grams, and without the battery, it's 78.7. And the battery by itself is coming in at 47.2. Okay, so the problem that I was having, uh, when the reason I couldn't get this to review is because um, the props would explode. You can see right here, they would explode here at the hub. And this is one of the blades I was able to retrieve. Most of them, I couldn't find them because the prop would explode and the force would fly away and then the drone would just crash and typically would crash within a minute of takeoff. And um, I quickly discovered, well, after I lost all the props that I, they basically, I think it, they sent three sets of props or four sets of props and I uh, ran out of props at, at a certain point after um, the crashing a ton and I wasn't able to finish the review because I couldn't get enough flight footage to make a review. I suppose other reviewers got lucky and they got all their flights in before their props failed on them. Maybe I got a worse batch than others. I know that other people have had this problem with the props fly off. And I discovered, I think, the reason, I think they need to redesign these props. Even though they've, this is made by HQ Prop, they've, um, iFlight has stopped using these and now they've gone to these gem fan props. And the hub is a lot bigger on the gem fan props. So if you look at how big that is over, on the gem fan, that, that center part there, much wider, and you see how thin the each prop hub is. If they made this hub the same thickness as the gem fan, I don't think this would have been a problem. And that's that's where the failures have happened. And also, um, sometimes they don't just they don't fail like where they explode. They just because it's it's so thin, the hub seems to stretch, and then on the uh, motor shaft the prop just spins freely. So the motor will spin and the prop doesn't really spin that much or you don't get that much power. And then you get all kinds of vibrations, of course. Um, it's because the um, this hub has stretched out for some reason due to the RPMs or whatever, mostly because I think it's too thin. And of course, this might be all a moot point because iFlight has stopped using this prop in, in, in this particular drone. They have switched over to the gem fan prop, which I have tried. Now these are almost the same size. The HQ, this is actually a 1.8 inch prop. Um, so technically it should be called the Defender 18, not the Defender 16, because um, when the 16 is in, you know, it's supposed to be reflecting a 1.6 inch prop, but it's actually a 1.8 inch prop. The 45 millimeter prop's a little bit smaller. I mean, if you overlay these, it's almost the same. It's like 10th of a millimeter or something like that, barely noticeable. But the properties of this prop are really different from the HQ prop. Uh, a bit noisier because they're bull-nosed here. They're just kind of flat versus the HQ prop is more tapered. So these are quieter. These are a bit noisier and a little, little bit less efficient. So uh, you're supposed to get up to six minutes of flight time on the 900 milliamp hour 2S. And um, on the HQ, assuming my, my props didn't explode on a full flight, I was getting roughly five to five and a half minutes so maybe there was a little bit more more wind on the day i flew this on uh, the gem fan uh, i was only able to get about four and a half minutes on this prop because it's less efficient so also it depends on the wind and how you're flying etc so some things to keep in mind they have switched over to that prop that's what they're putting in in the packaging if you're looking for more flight time and a little bit more weight and a little bit bigger quad go for the defender 20 instead i i didn't get that one i didn't get tested comes with a bigger motor it's a 3s setup so it comes with a 3s 900 milliamp hour battery so you're going to get overall more flight time that the two inch prop is a lot has a much bigger hub i think it's also that one's also made by jump fan um and the frame is only a little bit bigger than the defender 16. i think you would only want to get this if you absolutely had to get the smallest uh profile possible and then, um, you know, if you're obviously looking for less weight, if you want to get under 100 grams, this isn't going to be it. This is obviously about 128 grams or so. You're going to want to get go for like the Pavo Pico or something like that where you can get it under 100 grams. But basically what they're trading off here is a bigger battery uh, and more weight for a little bit more flight time. It's essentially the same size prop, and but a little bit smaller motor than on the Pavo Pico. So... That's kind of the big difference between this one and the Pavo Pico. Okay, so if you're wondering if this is gonna be for you or not, um, I think that 
basically what this kind of boils down to is whether or not you're one of those folks that are looking to get into this, uh, you know, micro Cinewhip game with the DJI 03 system, and you're not necessarily looking for something that's going to require soldering for repairs. So if that, if you're if you're kind of in that boat where you aren't confident in your soldering capability, or you don't want to solder, you just want something that's easy to fix, this is the model to get. Most of the other Cinewhip models do require in, in, in a repair are going to require you to do a bit of soldering to fix it. And if that's something that you're lacking or you would pr prefer to have something that's a lot easier to fix, this is the model to get because there's only six screws that you need to take off to take this uh, prop cover off, uh, prop guard. So you take this one screw here, there's another one there, another one here, with this, these two here, and then these two here. And then what happens is that this prop guard, which looks like this, will come off, so it's going to be oriented like so. You'll be able to take those six screws, pop this off, and then the uh, air unit is going to be inside here, which is, as you can see, it's screwed to the bottom here. And there's going to be a cable that goes to the flight controller. And then, for example, if you burn a motor out, uh, the motors are on plugs, and I'm not sure if, yeah, I can't, I'm not sure if I'll be able to show it to you, um, but yeah, they are on plugs, they're plugs into the flight controller, so you can easily swap the motor out, you just have to swap out these three, to un uh, unloosen these three screws here, uh, and then unplug the motor, and then you'll be able to swap the motor out. Uh, the, if you have no damage to the O3 air unit, you can get a replacement for that, and then it's also on a plug as well, so there's no soldering involved there. Everything is just screws and plugs, uh, same with the receiver, it's on a plug. Uh, this USB port is also on a little cable, it's on a plug that goes into the all-in-one flight controller. So, if you're looking for something that's easy to fix, that doesn't require soldering, this is the model they get. So I think what they designed this for. They designed this to be as easily repairable as possible, and they do have a lot of spare parts available to you for you to buy. If you have this, this is the prop guard part. Uh, the flight controller is connected to this part here where the uh, battery connection is. Um, all these are you can get on the iFlight website. Uh, they, sh they should be linked to the main product page. And I think that's what they are intended. They, that's, that's, that's something that I think they're advertising as much. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure why, because I think that out of all of the little micro cinema models here that have come out recently, this is definitely the, the, the easiest one to fix. Now the downside is um, these parts may not be available forever. So if you do happen to get this model and you like it, and you want to keep it around for a while, I would recommend buying the spare parts you think you'll need going forward in the future. Because typically a lot of these FPV companies, they'll, you know, once these models have sort of run their course, you know, might, you know, in some cases it might be a you know, year or two years, maybe longer if you're lucky, they'll keep making the spare parts for them and keep selling them. But at some point they'll discontinue the model and then the spare parts will eventually not be restocked and then they'll just uh, eventually they'll, they'll they'll be sold out and you won't be able to get them anymore so that is the downside is you know the upside is you'll be able to fix it pretty easily uh, without really you know having to do too much thinking in terms in terms of resoldering that kind of thing the repairs will be fairly, fairly straightforward the downside is if you are going to be crashing a lot you probably want to buy some spare parts when you buy the uh, the, the actual uh, plug-and-play model. Anyway, after I got all the sort of prop issues resolved, I was able to fly it a while, I thought it flew pretty well on the HQ props. Now, uh, I, know, I know Jello, pretty good flight times. Uh, the platoon seemed fairly solid and locked in. But when I switched this over to the gem fan props, I got a lot more vibrations. Now, I've just, I've noticed that the gem fan props in general tend to be more unbalanced than the HQ props. Um, I, I would recommend if you're uh, going to be getting this model, buy a whole bunch of extra gem fan props and uh, you can test them to see if they're balanced by uh, spinning them up in beta flight one motor at a time. Uh, if you want a video on that one, let me know. I, I, I did talk about this earlier, but I don't think I made a video about it. Uh, um, I found that about one in four gem fan props. So basically if you buy a pack about one of them in the four will be unbalanced and you'll need to swap it out. So um, I would recommend buying a bunch more of the gem fan props so you can swap out the unbalanced ones because they will cause vibrations 
And once that happens, you will see some jello in the um, 4K footage from the DJI O3 camera. So unfortunately, I'm releasing this video with the video footage from the HQ prop, which of course now they uh, just they just told me that they're switching over to the gem fan prop. So I'm not going to be able to give so show you any footage with the gem fan prop because I don't have uh, an, any gem fan props to put on this one at this time, and I just need to release the video. So if you want to see this with the gem fan prop footage, let me know, and I'll try and acquire some more gem fan props. Um, and that will require a retune on the pigeon. So I am trying to see if uh, iFlight has retuned this or not. I haven't gotten a straight answer from them about that. I expect that because they're switching the props over to a different prop, they're probably going to retune it and then release that tune on their website, on their support page. So I would check over there to see if uh, there was any updates on that. As of uh, the recording of this video today, yeah, I think it's like November 11th or 12th, it's um, not updated yet as far as I know. Uh, but I, you know, when I did try the gem fan props uh, very briefly, uh, it didn't seem like the pin tune was designed for the gem fan props. So I didn't really get a chance to uh, fly that much on that prop because I was expecting the, the, uh, the new set of uh, HQ props to show up and that's what I was going to base my review on. But then they sort of threw me threw me under the bus and uh, swapped the props out completely for the gem fan props. So, yeah, I'm not sure how useful this review is going to be, but yeah, I'm putting it out there as is. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to see an updated review, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's going to cover for this video. Let me know if you got any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.